All right, tonight I am going to show you how to pour or cast a uh, silicone mold um, or cast silicone. Um, it honestly is really easy. I have, um, this is now my fourth time I've done it. And at first, when I first started doing it, I'm like, oh, this is going to be so hard. Actually, like, there's been times in the past that I've like kind of talked myself out of it, um, of doing silicone molding because it just seemed um, very unobtainable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do silicone molding. Um, I have um, consulted with a actual silicone caster um, in my local area, and um, yeah. So I'll kind of show you the techniques that I've been using. Um, anybody that's a professional that does this for a living, um, you are welcome to leave in the comments um, what I got wrong, but um, I can give you a little bit of run through of the basics of it and just some things to look for and uh, things of that nature. So um, pretty much what we're going to go through tonight is um, one, setting up your mold. Um, I'll show you a mold first um, that I've been working on. Um, so to give you guys a quick run through, um, I did a test um, mold earlier just to make sure that I had everything down before I actually did the live stream. Um, so this is, the what I'm gonna show you guys tonight is the silicone mold that fits on the Malamask. Uh, the Malamask is the N95, <clears throat> sorry, it's a reusable mask that um, fits one-time filters that are tested at N95 specs. Um, currently, when this video is being recorded, I am literally waiting. Hopefully, I'll have the results tomorrow on the uh, filter tests that are being run out in uh, around Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but really what I'm doing is I'm literally casting for this mask and actually a couple other masks um, the same mold that will actually fit on multiple masks. Um, so you can see here, this is one I casted earlier. And if you can, and if I were to actually show this up close, there's actually very, very fine details in this. And honestly, I'm thoroughly amazed at how easy it was to um, pour this. And so what I'm gonna show you is not only the pouring, but also um, some techniques I have learned in the couple times I've done this, of even how to remove bubbles and kind of degas the silicone itself. Um, and I'm literally using this shot back here to do it. And so um, I'll kind of show you a little bit of the tools that I have first things that you might need and kind of um, give you a run through um, before we actually start. So anyways, um, so these are the pieces of it. I'm just going to set these aside for now. So what the tools that um, you will need, and I had kids in here earlier and now my tape measure has disappeared yet again. Oh. Um, so I have a tape measure and I, it's kind of weird that I would have a tape measure for this. I'm, it's not really probably the correct way of measuring the amount, but I know how much I need. So I have a tape measure, Sharpie. Um, I have kind of like a tongue depressor. Um, I need literally just one of them. Um, I would also have, um, gloves, um, nitrile gloves, um, because the stuff does get sticky tacky if it gets on your hands. Um, and then I also have a, uh, like disposable cup. So like this one, you could probably use, a, um, like a Dixie cup, depends on how much you need. Um, I use this cup as the combination cup of combining the two. Um, you can see earlier, this was the leftover from what I have. I've got this measured out pretty well. Um, that's ultimately been solidifying for about three hours now. Um, and then I actually have, these are so little tiny solo cups. Um, I used to have a gecko and I used to feed my gecko um, in these little solo cups. Unfortunately, 
he died. Um, and I got left with a whole bunch of, of these solo cups. Um, so for projects like this, it's perfect because then I can literally um, put my A and B in here and then literally combine it into um, the common cup for mixing. So the cups and the solo cups, obviously you want your silicone. That's the important, that's a very important piece. Yeah, I have my mold. Um, I have a putty knife because um, you will probably spill. And I left this on here from earlier to show you guys, but literally it's a plastic putty knife. Um, anything you spill, as long as it's the mix together, it'll come right up. Um, it's silicone. It really, I mean, it's just like if you sprayed silicone or like sealing it around like the outside of your house or, you know, sealing something off. Over time, it breaks down and you can just peel it off. Well, this silicone is acts very similarly to that. And then the last tool that I have, I um, actually have another tool too but, um, for this mold, but is my shop vac. And I retrofitted my shop vac with a Ziploc bag. And I did, and what I did is I just rubber band the Ziploc bag around the actual spout of the um, shop vac. And what I did is in one of the corners, I cut a arc in the corner to give it a, essentially when you spread it out in that corner, it gives you a round circle. I put that, I rubber banded that uh, to the actual spout so that I can still open the bag, put what I need in the bag, um, seal it up, close it up, and it'll be good. And you can see here earlier, I had leftover um, you know, junk silicone from uh, my earlier pour. So, um, yeah, but you're actually going to use this um, twice. Now, I will say this one thing I've learned um, if you do degas before, which it says you're supposed to, and they say you're supposed to, um, these cups are not really the right cups to um, degas in. You want a cup that won't compress. Um, these, unfortunately, are very brittle, and you can see where it actually cracked. Like, these are really easy to crack and break. Um, honestly, it, it cracked, but it didn't leak because I was able to tilt it to one side and ultimately know that the silicone leaked out. But that is the one thing. So what I'll show you two, uh, tonight is how to mix it and not get a lot of air bubbles. You have to be careful. It's going to take you a full three minutes to do it. Um, but in the end, um, I don't want to degas this cup. So that's really the reason why I'm doing it. All right. So with that, um, you guys kind of got to run through and what I'm going to do is we're going to start putting together the mold. So let's talk really quick on the mold. So this mold, um, literally I designed all of this in fusion, the mask and everything. And Fusion has nice features to be able to um, essentially create cavities in solid parts with another part. Um, so ultimately what I did, and I'll try and get this up nice and close so you guys can see. These are the cavities, the two-piece cavities um, that, I, that I made. All this is 3D printed. But um, if, as you can see here, I've got little dots here which are locator, essentially locator nubs. And so obviously you have more of a male end here, a uh, female here, and then you can see I have a ton of holes essentially for um, bolts to go through to sandwich this thing tight together so obviously nothing leaks out the side. Another note that I will make um, is I have little one millimeter holes right at the seam what I, on both sides. The reason why I did that is so that it gave um, air a pathway to escape um, when it's ultimately funneling down in the mold. Now this mold is made to stand vertical and you can see in the top I actually built into my model a reservoir for it to go down through the hole into the actual part and fill in and so ultimately I created these air holes so that as it filters down it has the ability to escape. We will also be degassing this. And I can show you something what happens when it doesn't get degassed. Um, actually, 
that's the wrong one. Um, find the right one here, maybe, maybe not. I guess maybe not. I've got so many things going on right now, so it's. Um, but ultimately, what you can get is you can get like air bubbles, big air bubbles, and and actually some air bubbles that you can even create voids in the silicone. So that is one thing that is very important is that. Um, you have a pathway for air to escape. And even the one that I had that um, I poured that I didn't degas and I had air holes, it's still, I still got an air bubble in there big enough that it was noticeable. Um, so degassing this is very important. Even though there are some silicones out there that say you don't need to, it's still, based on what I'm finding, it's still recommended to do. And you can easily do it with a shop vac. Um, just to get you what you want. Um, now, if you're wanting to do really, really nice, you know, no air bubbles at all, crystal clear, et cetera, et cetera, um, you can, I mean, they have vacuum bags out there specifically for this that you can hook up that ultimately maintain the integrity of the bag and still allow air to get sucked out. Um, they do sell those online. Um, uh, there's various silicone distributors and retailers out there that have these. Um, they're also um, like pressure containers you can buy as well that you can actually pressure um, suck. It's also, it's like a pressure, almost like a pressure canner type of thing. Except for you're not using heat to create positive pressure, you're um, actually creating a vacuum inside. So anyways, um, moving on. So, what we're going to do first is bolt the mold together. That is very important. So I here have a whole slew of bolts. I will say this, if you're making molds, one, make sure you have a bolt that is strong enough to hold your mold, mold together um, that won't compromise your plastic. Um, I like button head cap screws personally um, because they got a wider head. I don't need as much of a, um, like a washer and the plastic holds up pretty well to it. Um, and then I will say this, um, I went to start on this and I realized I have only lock nuts to, that fit these M8 bolts that I have. So I will be using my impact for this. Normally I would just use wing nuts um, if I had them or even just standard nuts. Um, but unfortunately I um, don't have that. So I will be using lock nuts. So here for a little bit, I will be using my uh, driver to drive these in. Um, but anyways, so I will assemble all the bolts. curious on how to make these molds, um, there's literally YouTube videos out there um, on Fusion 360 and if, or if you're SolidWorks and SolidWorks um, on how to um, make essentially a mold that you can use for casting. So, um, Now the silicone, while I'm putting these bolts on, the silicone that the silicones that I have poured so far are um, there is uh, the dragon skin. Ten, uh, so all the ones I mean, all the silicones I'm using are Smooth On brand. Um, it's Smooth Dash On um, is the name of the brand. Dragon skin, so the silicone molder that I've been kind of consulting with, he said if you're going to be doing home stuff, um, dragon skin, and then he was saying NV, 
is the style, and I think it's because the NV, um, I could be wrong, but it may not need to be degassed, or it's less likely to need to be degassed. Um, that is, I mean, it's a nice silicone. I got the fast. Um, the fast gives you um, only about 15 minutes of work time with it. Um, and then once, and then it cures in 75 minutes at room temp. Um, now, it's great. It's a nice, it's super soft, super squishy. It's very, 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 very stretchy. Um, but I needed something with a little bit more rigidity. And so that number that is actually on these silicones indicates kind of the, um, the, like the hardness or, you know, of the, um, of the actual silicone itself. So, um, tonight when I was doing my test, I used the dragon skin 20. Now this is not the NV version. Um, it's just the dragon skin 20. And this one, it, it, it's a little bit, so like I can show you these. So here's me holding a very similar part. And you can see that they're kind of, um, this one here is a lot flimsier than this one. This one's holding its shape a lot better. Um, it, that's just kind of a quick visual re representation of the differences in the silicones. And unfortunately, like any silicone project that you're going to do, you're going to have to probably do a little research to figure out what the right silicone is for what you're doing. Um, I originally bought uh, the Umu, um, Umu 30, which is a very, it's supposed to be a lot firmer. And really that one's more for if you're going to be doing, um, we'll just say like maybe you're going to be doing chocolate molds or something like that. Um, it's a more um, firmer silicone. Really not for like what we're doing, what I'm intending this for is this will ultimately be the buffer between the mask and your face. So I want it to be a softer material, but also not too soft that um, ultimately the mask could cut through it and you can still feel the mask um, there. But uh, yeah, so... Um, but tonight, what we're going to do is the EcoFlex uh, 20. Uh, the EcoFlex is a, um, a pot life of um, 30 minutes. So it can last for 30, you can pour for up to 30 minutes with it. Um, and then they cure both the Dragonflex, Dragon Skin 20 and the EcoFlex 20. Um, 20 uh, in four hours, but as we start pouring, I will talk about uh, how you can actually speed up that process. So with this mask that I did, um, I used heat to cure it in an hour. So this mold I'm going to post um, online. On this will be posted with the mask itself um, on both Thingiverse and Imagine. Um, one thing I will also probably design for these molds is a stand. Um, one thing I've noticed that with the vertical, if you do have any uneven surface or you know whatever the case may be. Um, you kind of need a stand for it. So, really, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is make my own stand um, using just C clamps to kind of act as a more of a base to this thing. So, because we're wanting it to stand more vertical. Okay. So now let's measure out our um, silicone. Now 
I the reason why I grab the tape measure is I know roughly about how much needs to be in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually mark the containers. Um, and if you're doing this for the first time, it wouldn't be a bad idea to also to mark what um, which silicone is going in which container. Um, so for this particular mold, roughly I'm measuring in these little two ounce solo cups. Um, you need about 20, from the bottom, about 20 millimeters up. Um, sorry for any of you that like Imperial, I am a metric guy. So, um, give me metric any day. I, I don't speak, I don't speak well in fractions. So, um, all right, so let's talk about the silicone really quick. So literally it's, it's, you have a part A and a part B. It is very, 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 very simple. You measure equal parts, equal A to equal B. Um, that is literally what I'm going to be doing here. Um, all right, so let's get pouring. So you will need the tongue depressor because um, not so much for when you're pouring this into the cups, um, but when you go to move the cups into the common cup, um, you will need the tongue depressor to kind of scrape out the uh, small cups and then start mixing in the large cup. So let me move things out of the way here so we don't... And then what I'll do is I will um, post the pictures online or maybe a video online of actually pulling the mold apart so you guys can see that as well. Um, because it is like, it, it's ridiculously easy. Um, literally I'm gonna pull, when I go to pull this mold apart, it's literally pull the bolts out, pry it off, and then just kind of slowly pull the material out of the mold. Um, so I can do that tomorrow and post a video on that as well. All right, so let's pour some silicone. All right, uh, when, so when you open these for the first time, they are going to have a foil top to them. Um, just break the seal. Usually you can get a, a lip that you can, um, well, all the other ones that I've opened, I can usually find a lip to open it, but apparently not. They did a really good job at sealing these. Right at the edge. All right, well, I'm not even going to try with this one. The other one. So they say, um, actually, you will need um, to. We'll need uh, two depressors. Um, I forgot about this part. Um, the uh, this will need to be mixed um, before you actually pour it into the part A, part B, part B cup. I've got paper towels nearby. It may not be a bad idea to keep some paper towels nearby um, when you're working on this. And just a garbage can that you can kind of toss things into that you don't mind. All right. So, okay. So let me start pouring. Um, I'll move this out of the way for now so you guys can halfway see what I'm doing. So I'm literally just filling up the line, and oh, uh, before I do that, let me mix this really quick. And this is just to make sure that the B is consistent throughout. I will probably use three tongue depressors with this, because one, they're cheap, and two, it's just easier than trying to keep track of which tongue depressor um, is for what solution. Here. 
And usually, like, obviously I'm talking to you guys, but normally, like, when I do this, when I have, sorry, when I do this, when I have been doing this, since obviously I'm not, you know, a expert on this by any means, um, it's been taking me roughly about 15 minutes total to do the whole process. So, um, it's pretty quick. Um, now, the silicones that I'm using tonight, um, so the Dragon Skin and the Ecoflex, are typically, um, they're actually very common um, for uses on skin. Um, so they're skin safe. Um, and then not only are they skin safe, but they're very common in um, prosthesis um, and use for padding and things like that. Um, so that was honestly like one of the things that drug me to this um, EcoFlex was, oh shoot, man, I made a mess. I have not made any messes with this before this. And tonight I'm just on a roll. Um, so the EcoFlex is a silicone um, that is, um, is, you know, I'm not going to say common, but it is more widely used in prosthesis. Um, and then they also use, like, both the Dragon Skin and the Ecoflex. Um, you'll, like, essentially, like, when you see, like, people, like, well, the show that I always think of, like, Walking Dead, when they make all the people that look like zombies and things like that, they're using these type of silicones to make some of those. Like, you can actually paint on the silicone, some of these silicones, and actually make molds out of, like, hands and things like that. Obviously, it takes time to cure, but it's um, things that uh, you can uh, use this for other than just what we're using it for here. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, maybe not. All right, so I'm going to fill up B cup. Up the line. And then always make sure you are stopping before you get to the line because ultimately what it's going to do is it's going to kind of create almost like uh, as you're pouring the sides are not going to catch up to the middle the middle is actually going to be higher than the sides and so as the the uh, silicone part settles it'll actually flatten out and then you'll get your true representation so before about you know a hair before you reach the line stop pouring and it'll end up uh, you'll be at the line or maybe a hair over um, and so that's what happens with both of these. All right, so lids are back on the containers. Um, make sure you store these in roughly about a 70, 73. They say 73 is optimal uh, for these, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it into the common cup, both part A and part B, and um, we're gonna start mixing it. Now, I will say this, um, one other thing that you might want to have nearby, um, I have one nearby, but it's called a Google Home, is a timer. Um, that is something you will need uh, because everything in silicone seems to be uh, time, one, time sensitive and two, uh, very, time is very important that you um, do things in the times they recommend. Uh, taking shortcuts will leave you with sticky um, silicone um, um, like fixtures because ultimately you didn't get a consistent uh, mix throughout the whole silicone batch. So, hey Google, set a timer for three minutes. Three minutes, and we're starting now. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is gently kind of um, stir the silicone and as I'm stirring the silicone I'm scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, getting the corners um, all of that and literally what I'm going to do is just kind of like stir it around, fold it in from the sides, kind of try to not circulate it top to bottom or you will bury bubbles in this. Uh, so just understand 
that if you do kind of turn it over top to uh, bottom to bottom over top, um, you will add bubbles to your mixture very easily. Um, so what you do is gently kind of um, stir it, and I'll show you here. Um, trying to hopefully a little bit more up close, you can see as I'm stirring it, but it's not. Really, this is it. So three minutes of this. So if you guys do have any questions, I believe this thing does have live chat on it. Um, I can answer things if you guys do have any questions. So continue to stir and mix. And there it looks to be a little bit of delay on the video, about 15 to 30 seconds. So. Yeah, I got about eight people watching right now. And, um, how many people are from RCL? If you put in the comments. And how many people are not from River City Labs that uh, caught the feed? I know there's uh, Alec from Virginia. Um, if he tuned in, um, hey, thanks for the name for the mask. Um, I appreciate it. Um, the, uh, I will say as I'm stirring this and having a conversation with you guys, um, I appreciate all the um, support from people as they've been following the project, the mass project. Honestly, I'm going to tell you guys this. I am, I, I can't believe that the mass project um, is where it's at. Never did I expect this to get where it's at today and me being testing materials and finding what I found. Um, and really it's, um, I, I'm I, absolutely amazed. So um, if you guys, people watching this after the fact or even people watching this now, if you guys ever have any questions on this stuff, let me know. Um, I may, you know, with this, I've spent about 160 hours on this mass project, and I mean, that, that a lot of that has been um, doing research on the, um, hey Google, add 25 minutes to the timer. Okay, so now I'll pause what I was saying yeah, there. 25 minutes added to your three minute timer. And um, now we're to the point where we can start pouring. Um, so we've mixed it, it's uh, nice and consistent. I don't have, I maybe have a couple air bubbles in there, but it's not bad. Um, hold on to your tongue depressor, you will need it. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our mold and we are literally going to just into the reservoir, fill the reservoir. Um, I will say this, make sure your mold has a reservoir. My first one had like, I literally did like a fillet on the, um, around the hole. And I was literally for 15 minutes slowly eking in the silicone, which is why I got a silicone mold that is barely held together at the nose bridge. Um, so just, um, uh, so just, make um, be aware of that in your mold um, so this one here has a pot life of 25 minutes hey Google remove five minutes from the timer I couldn't find anything related to five minutes from the timer well, Google isn't the smartest all right so I'm gonna fill the reservoir and then I'm just gonna let it sit and now, so what it's going to do is it's going to slowly, slowly work its way down through the mold. And it will. It's one of those things like I've actually um, tried to print out of clear like PET and you, you can't see it, unfortunately. I've tried. Um, it's really like I'd love to be able to see what this is actually doing inside. Um, I've thought about, you know, maybe at some point making it to where I can print it and put a um, acrylic front on it so you can actually watch the silicone work its way down. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying, um, as this thing funnels down and into the, um, into the mold, I'm gonna um, continue to fill the reservoir as it works its way down. Um, 
and it will as it works its way into the mold and then you'll you will start seeing out of the little pinholes even though they're a millimeter it's crazy it will leak out of the pinholes um, as it works its way out of the pinholes that's kind of your your indication that it's getting where it needs to go um, so anyways if you guys have any questions on it on the mold on anything mask related and especially filter related um, that Pro, like I have interfaced with people that I never in my wildest dreams would have experienced would have expected to be interfacing with um, Yesterday I you know had the opportunity to talk to one of the subject matter experts on masks in the R&D division at um, Halyard um, Health formerly Kimberly Clark um, We've all seen their toilet paper dispensers, towel dispensers. Um, pretty much what I was told by, by a person last Saturday that was from uh, Halyard was, if the human body excretes it, they handle it um, with the products they make. And one of the products they make are N95 masks, which is one of the things in shortage right now. So anyways, um, like people like that, um, I've been able to interface with um, potentially I might be able I might be actually interfacing with Honeywell tomorrow, which is awesome um, Crazy 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 stuff um, But then also too, if you guys have any if you need any help for like finding resources uh, Finding materials things like that. I am like digging to the bowels of everywhere you could possibly find this stuff and finding it and actually one of the things I just let you guys know of so one of the things that I was working on today as this thing is uh, the silicone is working its way down um, is I have I'm now working on seeing if I can get um, a US MERV to EU UK standard of um, filter and so I'm reaching out to some people that um, me and some of my buddies are um, connected with in um, England. And I'm re reaching out to, my hopes that is that he'll um, reach back to me, Dave Hacken. He's from the Netherlands. Um, he's the guy that is behind, um, I think it's Blocks was the phone idea, the concept that he had, and then also Precious Plastics. Dave, if you're watching, I have a I have the pieces all cut of the plastic shredder. I just never finished putting the whole thing together. And I hate myself. You don't have to hate me. I hate myself. Not you don't hate obviously you wouldn't hate me, but um, disappointed. I guess you would say disappointed in me. Um, so I'm disappointed in myself um, in that too. But I'm hoping that get somebody from the EU to send me some filters and somebody from the UK to send me filters and if I can get filters that I can ultimately correlate a MERV to EU UK standard one this project this mass project can go worldwide um, without anybody having to do additional research not only that but then within the United States if materials need to be sourced from outside in the UK, EU, or that a company is making them outside of that country for EU and UK, you potentially could source those materials too. So like I'm, I was actually on running down a rabbit hole today on that. So um, if you guys have any, any, any leads or, or questions when it comes to that stuff, um, please let me know or ask your question. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna remove it from its stand temporarily. I will be adding these back on. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the bag that I'm using as like my makeshift uh, vacuum chamber. So what I'm gonna do is put it in the bag, seal it up, cares if there's air in the bag because air is going to get sucked out. Um, who, it really doesn't matter if uh, the bag gets into the silicone, um, but it's going to happen.
So I'm going to run the vacuum here and you guys are going to be able to hear me for a little bit. So, it will be probably a little messy when you open up the bag. Um, obviously, if you have a chamber, a chamber is gonna be a little bit nicer with this um, than a shot back with a Ziploc bag attached to it. But, it works, and that's all that matters. Um, I, uh... So, um, now I'm gonna kinda get to a little bit more of the um, curing part of things. So, like I said before, you can cure this at room temperature. I don't want to wait four hours. I want this to be cure in, cured in an hour. Um, so, what I've learned with at least the dragon skin is um, I can cut it into a quarter by essentially baking it at low temps. I'm going to say, do your research. Don't try this at home unless you do your research. I am not liable for you doing stupid things with your oven. Um, it is recommended by Smooth On to not use your kitchen oven for this. I'm using my kitchen oven for this. Um, also, Understand the plastics. If you are using a plastic mold, understand your plastics. Because if you cook this at the wrong temperature, you are going to have a mess. Also, if you do use an oven, I would highly recommend using some sort of sheet-like material that it can sit on, ultimately containing it. So a cookie sheet, something like that. It's silicone. You can remove it when it's done. Um, I, my wife actually didn't care that I was using her cookie sheet, one of her cookie sheets. Um, but understand that if you use your kitchen oven, you are on your own. Um, Smooth On doesn't even recommend that. I'm doing it. I want this done in an hour, not four. Um, so what I've learned is it's about a quarter of the time, um, but make sure you do your research on how long it takes. Um, but, I believe, hey Google, how much time is left on the timer? There's 13 minutes and nine seconds left. So we did this in 15 minutes, tops. Um, obviously me talking, obviously takes more time, but um, yeah. So, heat will make things cure faster. So, I will heat it at 
So this is ABS, this mold is made out of ABS. I will um, cook it at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly about um, your, oh my gosh, I think it's 72, oh no, I'm, I had it all figured out earlier. Uh, unfortunately, my brain is a little bit of mush. Um, 180 Fahrenheit, um, I will post in the comments the Celsius. Um, ultimately, for an hour, and it's good. Pull it out, pop it out of the mold, you're done. It will, it, it, it solidifies with heat very fast and very well. So I will um, give a little bit of a, maybe a review on another video um, of the molding this and telling you what the difference is between the Dragon Skin 20 and the Ecoflex, uh, skin, Ecoflex 20 is. Honestly, I don't know. So I'll give a little bit of a review on that. Um, another thing to, um, so when you pull this out of the mold, um, another thing that I kind of let you guys know about, when you do pull this out of the mold, um, I don't know where the cutoff went from the one I did earlier, but the reservoir will have a piece that um, will be attached to the top of the mask. What I do is I've been using just side cutters. I have these um, really nice um, electronic side cutters that actually cut really, really well. This is awesome for cutting the silicone and getting a nice clean cut to it. Another thing you're going to find 